program chair of the Libertyville Mundelein Historical Society. And I'm joined by uh, Sonia from Cook Memorial Library, who's helping host our event. Um, so first, just a bit of um, logistics um, for the, the Zoom program. Um, so if you don't mind, we'd love to have you all mute yourselves so that um, everyone can hear our speaker with minimal interference. So no, you know, phones go off or, or anything like that um, uh, during the presentation. Um, you know, turning off of your video is fine too. Um, so for questions, we'll have time for questions at the end. And um, you can type those into the, the chat box um, at that time at the bottom of the, the screen in Zoom. Um, and uh, Sonia will help facilitate the questions at the end. So um, let's see. Um, also, if you uh, want to you know, minimize the, um, the pictures on the side, one thing you can do is you know, hover over the top picture and you know, click either the small bar or the, um, the smaller um, middle box. Um, instead of, you know, the many boxes or the two boxes, and that will make your view, make you able to see more of the slide if you do that. If you have any trouble with that, you can um, ask one of us um, for help. Uh, we also have some support from the Cook Memorial Library uh, tech staff as well tonight, if you have any tech questions. Um, so uh, uh, next month, the uh, Libertyville Mundelein Historical Society will also have another one of these programs. Um, I think that'll be on Monday, November 23rd. And um, that talk will actually be on gentlemen farmers of Lake Libertyville and Lake Forest. Um, and our board president, Jenny Berry, and myself will be giving that talk. So um, that'll include things like the... Um, the farm at the Cuneo Mansion, which um, and and you know Melody Farm and Lake Forest and many others. So you can register for that on the Cook Library website. Um, so now what I'm going to do is um, introduce our speaker for the evening. Uh, Dale Egger is a lifelong Libertyville resident, uh, 1974 Libertyville High School graduate, and um, a retired Libertyville High School health education teacher and the current head wrestling coach, uh, beginning his 34th year in that position in the upcoming season. And he is also the author of the book, Libertyville High School Athletic History, The First 100 Years. Um, for which he has donated a little over um, $2,000 in proceeds to the Libertyville Mundelein Historical Society. So we are really so appreciative of his generosity there. Um, and Dale will be giving you an overview of the book tonight. Um, and at the end, there'll be more information about how to purchase if you're interested in more. Um, so uh, without further ado, I will um, mute myself and um, take my video off and pass over to Dale um, and he's going to I'll be advancing the slides so he'll tell me when to when to do so. Okay thank you for logging on everybody for those that you that attended my presentation on the LHS centennial celebration three years ago uh, this won't be going nearly as long I went into a lot of explanation then on each slide perhaps because I felt it'd be the last time I'd ever be speaking on behalf of Libertyville High School history, but I've had plenty of opportunities since. This isn't the last time either. Um, the book on LHS athletic history will be speaking long after uh, I'm finished tonight. In the book, there are 100 feature stories. I'll briefly discuss a good number of them, but not go in depth on any of them. So if there's enough of them that are of interest to you, uh, perhaps you will want to get a copy of the book and explains how you can at the end of the presentation. So you may move, advance. And in the fall of, of 1917 was the first year for Libertyville High School being a four-year school. We had talked about a football team, but as you can see by the empty classroom, we thought it was more important that we fill up our school first, but we did have a seven-man basketball team that first year that finished seven and six. Advance. We did have a football team in the second year in the fall of 1918. Um, they had a seven game schedule, but only played four of them due to the, uh, the worldwide flu ep epidemic cost them three weeks of, of games. We did have one great player, Jim McMillan, top row, third from left. He wound up uh, being an all American for the University of Illinois, blocking for Red Grange, played five years for the Chicago Bears, this 1924 picture below. But in the off season, he was making so much money in professional wrestling that he gave up the Chicago Bears and had a 20-plus professional wrestling career. Advance. 
our first football coach, and he actually was not the first basketball coach, but uh, took over the second year, was also our principal, uh, Lloyd C. Ray, uh, was only principal for four years and was a longtime Libertyville businessman. He did have two very athletic sons, Russell and Jimmy Ray. Uh, Jimmy in the top right, he had placed fourth in the state high jump in 1937, and on February 6th of this year, celebrated his 100th birthday. He is our oldest uh, Libertyville graduate. Events. We didn't have a track team until uh, 1926. This is the 1927 state champs below, but uh, Libertyville did send some athletes to the state tournament. Uh, the three athletes up above were all state um, in 1923 and 1924. And then it, it took us a long time to have another all stater because quite often it was the same season and I, I'm sorry, the same weekend as the conference championship, and they decided they'd be going for the conference championship events. Uh, girls sports started uh, very quickly, but uh, they did not start playing other schools until 1972, the fall of 72 when Title IX was passed. They would have seniors versus juniors. Um, they would, throughout the 20s, they were gaining sports. By the 30s, they were up to six sports. Advance. We did try baseball for two years in 1926 and 1927, but realized quickly that track was king. Uh, we did try one year of, of uh, tennis, but really only got one game in. And uh, that we did not have baseball again until 1951, did not have tennis until 1956. Advance. Some pretty cool 1920, fall 1924 pictures of the Brainerd Field. They called it Liberty Field at the time. We were piling up a lot of trophies in the late 20s and early 30s. Um, we got involved in the Northwest Suburban Conference in 1927. And um, for the next 10 years, won three out of every four conference championships. And one of the big reason why is because when Jack Martin came to town in the fall of 1927, uh, that's when he really started winning. As you can see in his nine years, he had six conference football titles with only three losses, meaning he took second place in those other years, five basketball titles, and including uh, an undefeated season in 1936, his final year. His right-hand man, as you can see, that's a really old school looking coach there, Pop Johnson, was his right-hand man for really only five years, but there's a nice story on him for his work with our athletes, but then he did just about everything uh, civically, including leading the depression relief effort. And in World War II, he's in charge of, of uh, rubber rationing. Uh, the track team did really well right from the start. Larry Crawford came in 1926. We won eight of the first 12 conference championships, placing second in the other four years. And then he, did, he had a 20 year career, did really well. Um, throughout his career, uh, but very civic minded as well. Uh, he developed the garden, the sunken gardens across from the Crawford warming house named after him. We're going to talk a lot about the Newsom Award. Uh, uh, Mr. Newsom was not a staff member. He was a community leader that took great interest in the high school. He started the Newsom Award in 1928. And we'll be talking a lot of, uh, about several of our Newsom Award winners as we go. Jack Horenberger was the captain of our first conference uh, championship basketball team in 1930. He went on to a really good career at Illinois Westland and came back to coach very shortly after graduation, both basketball and baseball. He's in the Hall of Fame for both sports. And the Illinois Westland Baseball Stadium is named after Jack Horenberger. Uh, Vance Burnett was a three-sport um, varsity athlete all, all four years of, um, of his high school. His teams won 11 of 12 champion, conference championships during those years. He was a state discus champion, played football for Northwestern, but he says his favorite sport was basketball. John Snow, in 1934, the first All-State football player we had, went on to Lake Forest College, had a nice career there. He is uh, responsible for being the first commissioner for Libertyville Boys Club football. Here's a picture of the 1957 board of directors, John Snow in the middle front row. And then his son, John Snow, 1961 all-conference wrestler, came back to be a school board member and parent as well. Uh, Dorothy Weir, when I was going through the 
the yearbooks and, and uh, drops of ink, there was nothing really mentioned about her that stood out. She was a Newsom Award winner in 1935, but all the while she uh, did not compete for Libertyville High School in track, but was uh, getting very skilled in track. And by 1939, she won the first of her, her 11 straight U.S. Javelin Championships, was on the 1948 Olympic team, but would have been in 1940 and 1944. Um, had they not been canceled due to World War II. Albert Crow was one of our star athletes, class of 35, um, had a nice career at uh, Lake Forest College until he actually had his leg amputated his junior year during a, from, for a football injury. Uh, at age 28, was Libertyville mayor and had a long career first as the Oak Grove principal and ultimately as the Oak Grove superintendent. Ralph Gist had a lot to do with this, this project. Um, I did have the yearbooks and the uh, drops of ink at my disposal, but um, I, before I started on the book, I wanted to go through all his uh, articles, any Libertyville athlete in between 1937 and 1984 know all about Ralph Gist and all his work. Um, Ralph started sending articles into the Independent Register in 1937 and shortly thereafter graduation, became the sports editor and stayed the sports editor through 10, 1984. And a lot of people I learned about, I knew nothing about until I went through his microfilm in Cook Library. When Jack Martin left after the 1936 season, Art Bergstrom took over. Uh, he had similar success, not quite as much in basketball, but had some really good football teams as well. After 11 years, after the 1947 school year, he went to Bradley University to be their head football coach and athletic director, and eventually uh, took a job with the NCAA on the executive board, and he was in charge of infractions. In the lower right, he's entering an infraction committee meeting, probably laying the hammer on some program. Uh, and he was also responsible for division one, I'm sorry, division two and division three origination. Homecoming started in the fall of 1930, but it must not have been that big a deal because there are no pictures of it. The picture on the left is from the fall of 1931 and by the 40s, as you can see, 1943, very big deal by then. From the late 30s through the early, early 40s, we had a lot of um, athletes that stayed in town the rest of their life. Uh, many had children, attended Libertyville High School, some grandchildren as well. Uh, Norm and Hazel um, Ennevold, um, high school sweethearts, wound up getting married. Both were Newsom Award winners. Um, both were American Legion Award winners. Norm was the valedictorian class president. Hazel was the uh, top musician from the class and uh, a really nice picture of uh, Norm being the running back of above. And they had four children that attended Libertyville High School as well. Um, Bud Brown was class of 1940 class president, all state football, top basketball player and uh, back as well. And then uh, came back to be a school board member and is the father of Libertyville Mundline historical secretary, uh, Lori Adams. The Gossel family had three boys that were all halfbacks and uh, two of them stayed in town and uh, had a bunch of boys that were also great athletes, as well as um, uh, Gail Gossel was the 1972 Newsom Award winner, though again, she didn't get to compete against other schools. Uh, John Kruckman was a um, three sport athlete, uh, the first uh, freshman that played varsity basketball. He had a nine year minor league career, was a future LHS athletic parent. Two of his boys are down below and then uh, had some grandchildren as well as uh, one of them being a Newsom Award winner. Warren Shorty Boys, class of 44, was the top scorer for the basketball team. We didn't have a baseball team at the time, but he was very successful in baseball. He had um, three daughters, very successful in athletics. One, uh, Peggy Freeze being a Newsom Award winner. And he had some grandchildren that were athletic, uh, athletes for Libertyville High School, including the Newsom Award winner, Jamie Freeze in the lower right-hand corner. Daryl and uh, Ruth Luce uh, were both Libertyville High School students. Daryl, class of 1944, leading rusher, uh, but he wasn't the Newsom Award winner. His wife was, class of 1946. He had uh, several children that were very successful at Libertyville High School, as well as grandchildren, uh, including uh, several valedictorians uh, among them. 
Norm Erickson did not have grandchildren, but he had three very successful athletic boys in the 1970s. And he was a Hall of Fame football and basketball official, longtime coach at Deer Path Middle School as well. Don Weisskopf played basketball, was a starter for the basketball team, but he was, despite us not having a baseball team, he was a very successful pitcher, played for the University of Illinois, got drafted and was in the Phillies organization before his arm uh, went south on him. But he was a college coach at Idaho and then had a great career writing books on um, individual sports teaming up with, um, well, in the middle picture on the bottom, Walt, Walter Alston of the Dodgers, and then on the right picture, George Allen of the Rams and the Redskins, and several other top-notch coaches as well. Uh, we had um, athletics throughout World War II, but uh, some of the years the conference schedule was, was not going. We tried to play as many games as we could, in some respects, similar to what they've got going right now, just trying to have some kind of season. Uh, but we did lose 21 Libertyville High School uh, students uh, through the war, including three right in a row from the 1942 basketball team. Um, Bill Yope was a three-sport athlete, class president, um, did not get recruited by the Colorado School of Mines, but went there anyway, was a football, baseball, and boxer for Colorado School of Mines, was a 1952, I'm sorry, 1956 uh, athlete of the year for Colorado School of Mines, inducted into their Hall of Fame. Doug Kay was a three-sport athlete. He was either the captain or the quarterback in his three sports, played for Western Illinois, and then began a long coaching career. Deerfield High School on the left, UCLA in the center. And then at age 82, he was a defensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Storm of the Arena Football League. And he said that he was ready to go for the fall of 2018, except for Tampa Bay Storm folded. He says if they pick up, a, a, he didn't want to move out of Tampa at this point, but if they picked up another team at age 85, he would be up for it. Bob Tonicliffe, many know him, 31-year athletic director, 15-year Hall of Fame head football coach, and um, came out of the service, tried to go back to Northwestern, play football, but by that time, he didn't feel like he had it in him, uh, but would have been a great football player for them. In the lower right picture, you see 60 years of Libertyville High School athletic directors um, at Tim Elmer's um, re retirement party. The Whitmore family, um, Wayne Whitmore came in 1957 and um, spent four years as our head track coach, assistant football, head wrestling until uh, he went over to become the athletic director of Mudline High School. But his wife, Ellen, was a longtime home ec teacher. And then all four of their children were very athletic, um, very top-notch athletes for Libertyville. Lisa in the lower right was a Neesom Award winner. Ted DeRoots was a three-sport athlete, a very reluctant wrestler. He uh, got cut from the basketball team and then decided to try wrestling. Uh, went into teaching and coaching at Antioch High School, was a football assistant, defensive coordinator for many years, longtime head wrestling coach, inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, and then on the right, uh, serving in the role of the executive board for the USA Wrestling, which he got into after he retired from Antioch High School. Max Sanders was an all-conference in all three sports, married the homecoming to, uh, queen, Peg Kroonberg, uh, came back in 1966 to be a coach on the Libertyville High School staff and uh, spent 20 years as a head basketball coach. And in the, his son was a um, state champion in gymnastics. Lower picture on the right, our first cha conference championship baseball team had Max Sanders middle row on the far right was their starting shortstop as a freshman. Warren Nicholas, class of 60, was all conference in history sports as well. Longtime area coach at Zion Bend, but did come back to coach our sophomores for four years. And then perhaps you remember the Lake County Rifles from 1965 through 1974. Um, Warren was a uh, top receiver for the Rifles for many of those years. Our sports complex is named after Walter R. Johnson, who had a 20 year career at Libertyville High School, uh, four years as a principal, 16 as a superintendent and uh, just a great fan, which I think you have to be if you're gonna dress up like that, you must uh, bleed orange and black. 
Jerry Rapline from the class of 65 set a record for our tackles that I don't think will ever be touched, 171, and that's in eight games. I think the next closest is like 150 uh, going through the playoffs. Jerry was a three-sport athlete and then a Hall of Fame linebacker for Bradley football. Mike Dahl set the conference single game uh, scoring record of 45 points back in 1965 and held that record for 45 years and held it through many years when he had a three-point play. The guy that uh, took the record from him um, had, was a three-point specialist. He had a Hall of Fame career and All-American career for Oglethorpe College Division II and then was uh, the only player to be from Libertyville High School to be drafted by the Atlanta, um, in the NBA draft for the Atlanta Hawks. Doug Williamson was not that interested in running, but happened to be very good at it. What he liked was baseball and basketball, uh, but he took the cross country right away, uh, was our first all state athlete in cross country, taken second in state, had a long time tra uh, track career at uh, Virginia, Arkansas and Alabama. His top recruit in the lower right hand corner, Michael Conley, the 1992 Olympic gold medalist in the long jump. Craig Hunter was a longtime Libertyville staff member, recently retired, but still on our tennis coaching staff nearly 20 years, maybe not, the, maybe 15 years after retirement. He was a conference doubles champion with Ron Kokalba, so I think might be on. And he was an all conference um, cross country runner as well and involved with all the musicals. During the 1960s, Barrington was the best team in the area, but for four years in a row, we beat them when no one else in the conference had beaten them and um, kept them from, um, um, put them in second place for two years and uh, tied for the conference championship. The other two years, uh, we really had their number. Our first night basketball conference basketball championship in 33 years when it was in 1969. And at first we thought we were going to do it till uh, Keith Hansen without an injury. We wound up winning it anyway. Dan Holm was our first All-State wrestler, taken third in 1970, and then won the title in 1971. Went on to Iowa for a very successful career, including the national championship in 1975. Had a line passed in the fall, in the, in the summer of 1972, so we were up and running by the fall of 1972. But in the upper two right, uh, the upper pictures on the right side, left side, up high, we were actually played a few sports thanks to Gretchen Hausman, uh, coached in the uh, uh, upper row, far right picture. She got us started in a few uh, sports. By the time we got going, Libertyville girls were dominating the conference. One of our top athletes, uh, Diane Miller, <clears throat> excuse me, from the class of 74. In 72, she actually wanted to be on her boys golf team because she was um, shooting as well as any of them. But the IHSA said, no, we're not ready for girls beating boys in any sport, including non-contact sports, which we thought would happen. But she wound up having a, a nice next two years, went to U of I, won the Illinois State Collegiates, second in the Big Ten, qualified for the NCAA tournament, long-time career as a golf teaching pro. Uh, Larry Leon was a 17-year basketball coach. The upper picture is when uh, we won the regionals, which was the first state series championship uh, that we won 1974 since 1946. Larry was an um, all-conference baseball player for Northern, and his son was a two-time all-conference player in basketball and baseball, as well as an all-state honorable mention in basketball. Scott Delink was a three-sport athlete for Libertyville, walked on at Indiana State University to wrestle for them, eventually earning a full scholarship, then had a 37-year Hall of Fame uh, coaching career for Crown Point Indiana High School, as well as um, them winning the uh, 2009 state championship. Bob Billberg was a 15-year head coach, 73 through 87, and he was a state champ for Waukegan High School and then was a two-time NCAA runner-up for Moorhead State. And uh, that's his daughter, who should probably be about 50 right now, sitting with him at his uh, 1973 uh, coaching meet. Brett Butler 
played every sport that he could possibly play at Libertyville, uh, baseball, three-time all-conference wrestler, played two years of football, thought he's too small, switched across country, became all-conference there, and then uh, 17 years in the major leagues for a number of teams. Uh, his best team was playing for the Dodgers, played, uh, was an all-star for them, played in the World Series for the Giants. We had never been to a sectional championship game before in baseball until 1976, and they went all the way to the state championship game, lost five to four. Uh, two players up above, Mike Lindell, Brian Schwerman, were both drafted, spent some years in the minor leagues. Ernie Ritta, lower right hand, left-hand corner, was our coach. Pat Miller played every sport you could possibly play. Newsome Award winner, just like her father, Dick, from the class of 1951 in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, played four years on the LPGA and then became a, a golf teaching pro in Atlanta. Dale Christensen had a 23-year Hall of Fame uh, coaching career. Quite an athlete himself in the upper right-hand picture. He is number 78, chasing down uh, an LSU running back as he played in the Rose Bowl for Colorado in 1962. Mary Teagues was all-conference in uh, softball, basketball, and volleyball, then went on to a Hall of Fame career for Eastern Illinois, came back to Libertyville High School as our head softball coach for six years. Ike Riley and Matt Foley were uh, great friends, star athletes. Uh, they were both the top track runners. Ike was the um, uh, top cross country runner. Matt was a running back for the football team. In their professional careers, they both been very successful. Ike is a musician. Matt Foley is a well-known Catholic priest. And then they both went to Marquette together, played on the rugby team. Matt on the left, Ike Riley on the right. And their soon to be famous Saturday Night Live cast member, um, Chris Farley is sitting in the middle as their teammate. Our gymnastics program got off the ground in the late 70s and um, Paul Blasco, began, an all-American gymnast for Indiana State, began the boys. Kurt, Kurt Austin did not originate the girls, but um, a couple years after they got started, he took over. He was a NCAA champion for Iowa State and eventually took over the boys when uh, Paul Blasco retired. Girls basketball was dominating throughout the 70s and the 80s in our conference, but um, we've only taken, and still do, but we've only taken two trips to state in 1983, 1985, under the direction of Tom Murphy in the upper left-hand corner. The 1986 team won the first conference championship in 12 years for Libertyville, and then our first of seven teams that qualified for the dual team state tournament. Brian Wilcox was an All-State football player for our fall 1985 team, our first team to qualify for the state playoffs. He went on to a UCLA uh, successful football career and then came back to Libertyville as a driver ed teacher as well as a coach. Terry Rogers was All-Conference in every sport she played. Um, All-State basketball player, played for Duke University, and uh, has most recently won her 500th career win as Nutrier High School's head girls basketball coach. We started our soccer program in the fall of 1978, and before the fall of 1986, we had only won one regional title, but in 19, fall of 1986, they won everything uh, until they lost in overtime in the state championship game. Annie Bitta was a longtime uh, boys and girls soccer coach, 30 plus years for the boys, 20 plus years for, for the girls, and uh, won a state championship for both the boys and the girls. His girls team won it in 1991 um, with many all-conference players. And in your next slide, their top player was Allison Marquardt, who not only was All-State in 1991 as, her as a senior, but was a four-time All-State uh, soccer player, uh, something we've never had before. But then she played volleyball for the University of Miami at Ohio in that there was a lot more scholarship money back then for volleyball than for soccer. Boys basketball had not been to the sec uh, super sectionals leading into 1991, but they won the super sectionals, won their first round game, nearly knocked off the um, uh, nationally ranked Proviso East team in the uh, semis and lost a close game to Marshall in a third place game. So fourth and state, our highest boys basketball finish. 
our cross country program from the mid 70s on was dominated on a conference level. But in the early 1990s, they're taking, they're getting a state every year and the girls winning four state trophies, the boys winning one. Uh, Harry Carlson on the left is your girls coach, longtime girls coach, Bill Dorch on the right. And then in the lower left-hand corner, Becky Coleman won the 1990, uh, fall 1992 cross country champ state championship and uh, 1993, track 3,200 meter run. And then Chris Brown on the right took second in the fall of 1992, um, his third All-State finish. Bill Clay didn't compete for any sports at Libertyville High School because um, he's always spending his time traveling nationally and internationally on sprint bike racing and became a 1996 Olympian. Matt Heldman uh, willed our 1994 team to the uh, super sectionals in 1993 as a, as a junior. 1994, he willed the team to the, um, to the state tournament. Um, All-state basketball player and had a very successful career at the University of Illinois. And then, uh, but tragically uh, passed away in a car accident. And uh, at the age of 23, we have our scoreboard in his memory. Kelly Carl, 12 sport varsity athlete, all conference in all three sports, all state and cross country and soccer. But basketball was the sport that she loved the most and played for the University of New Hampshire in the lower right hand picture. Colin McMillan was 5'8 when he was a freshman and got cut from the tennis team. So he came out for volleyball. By the time he was a senior, he's up to 6'10. Um, recruited by Ohio State, played in an NCAA championship game against UCLA, that's him, at, at the net, and then got into college coaching. Um, right now, he's the associate head coach for Penn State. Greg Herman was our 1975 Most Valuable Swimmer. Came back to teach and coach at Libertyville High School, 20-plus uh, years for both the boys and the girls. Uh, we haven't had that many uh, All-State divers outside of our 10 years that Brooke Bauer was our diving coach, uh, nine All-Staters in 10 years, and I'm not even sure which one's which, but they're all pretty good divers. LHS had quite a role in Illinois girls wrestling. It's uh, girls wrestling is fairly popular right now, but our top picture is Margaret Legates uh, was the first girl in Illinois to wrestle in a match with, in boys wrestling against a boy back in 1992. Um, had several JV, we had one varsity win, several J, plenty of JV wins. And then she is uh, uh, declared the winner in the US Women's National Semifinals up above. Manny Thompson came in the year after Margaret left and she was the first girl to qualify for the sectionals in 1997. She qualified two years, won 50 varsity matches in her career. First girl to ever qualify for sectionals. Lucas McKnight was the four-year starting varsity catcher for our, our baseball team. He was a three-year starting point guard, did not play his senior year, which means he was a starting point guard as a freshman, got drafted by the Cubs, played six years in their minor leagues. They had offered him a position in the scouting department, which he took, and now he's in the front office. And that's him with the other front office staffers celebrating in 2016 on Cleveland Indians field after they won the World Series. Kevin Walter was an All-State football player for Lairdyville, went to Eastern uh, Michigan, and then uh, was drafted by the Bengals, uh, played uh, several years for the Bengals, and then had a great career for the Texans, finished up with the Titans. Jim Panther uh, came to Libertyville High School in the fall of 1969, uh, but he did not coach for the first four, baseball for the first four years because he was off playing Major League Baseball in February, off to spring training, playing for the A's, the Braves, and the Rangers, uh, but then came back. I was a 20-year head baseball coach for Lairdyville. In the lower left, he's celebrating his 500 win as our baseball coach, and then had a great run as our freshman basketball coach, rarely losing. Our girls' soccer team won the, their second state championship in 2001 under the direction of head coach Scott Shinto. We have had four all-state water polo 
uh, recipients. Three of them were Andrea Buchero, uh, water polo goalie, and she comes from a water polo family. Both her brothers were very successful, and now she's a long distance swimmer in California. As you can see, the Golden Gate Bridge as she's finishing one of her long distance swims. Joyce Kleinheinz was all conference in all of her sports, all uh, state and soccer, had a nice career for Illinois State, um, all conference for Illinois State. She's now on our staff uh, as a physical welfare teacher and into uh, competitive powerlifting. The Boys Lacrosse program started in 19. 93 under the urging of Eric Burleson, our first All-State player, and uh, they became very successful very quickly. Had some great players, including including Stephen Brooks, who in the middle picture um, played professionally, was an All-American for Syracuse and played several years professionally. Uh, the two Shackner kids, uh, Michael on the left and Nicole on the right, were probably our best golfers. And they both had very successful college careers at Duke and at Florida. And in the lower left hand, our uh, top boys golf team finished 10th in the state in 1978. Our top girls team finished seventh in the state in uh, the fall of 2015. The boys uh, won the 2004 state football championship after taking second in uh, the fall of 2003. Uh, coach Kuzieski was the head coach during that time. He has a Hall of Fame career as well and uh, was an All-State player for Alliance Ohio, played for Northwestern. And yes, those are pink jerseys because he was the master at promotional night. That was breast cancer night. Carl Jenrick was a 39-year football assistant coach, offensive coordinator. Uh, he was recently inducted into the Illinois Football Hall of Fame, and he is responsible for developing and maintaining for many years our weight room. Pat Summers had a long career as a um, baseball, varsity baseball assistant coach. He had a 20-year uh, career as our freshman football coach, rarely losing. And in his retirement, he has been in every sub role that you can think of. And if we needed a sub right now, I'm sure we'd go right back to him. The girls volleyball has always done very well on the conference level from the time we started out back in 1975, I think was the first year that we were in, a, had a conference race. But the first time we went downstate was in the fall of 2007 and took fourth, took fourth again in the fall of 2012, and then took second in the state in the fall of 2014. So three trips to the state. Uh, probably our top player, Morgan O'Brien in the lower pictures, all state um, in volleyball, assist leader for Libertyville, and then um, had a very successful year, uh, several years for, for the University of Illinois, but as a graduate transfer this year, she's starting for the University of Texas. Marshall Hollingsworth was an All-State player, leading our team to second in the state in the fall of, of uh, 2010, had an All-American career at Wheaton College, and then played professionally for the Columbus Crew, uh, played for only two years when uh, he was planning on playing longer, but knee injuries uh, cur curtailed his professional career. Manson Dizik was a very reluctant track athlete and then he went out for freshman baseball, got cut, was encouraged to go out for track, refused, got talked into it sophomore year, did pretty well. By his junior year, he became second in the state. By his senior year, he was a state championship, uh, won a state championship, and then had an all Big Ten career as a weightman for the University of Illinois. Morgan Dixon is our, our top swimming state finisher. She took a second in the fall of 2012 um, among her several state finishes, all state finishes, and then had an all Southeastern Conference career for the University of Tennessee. Evan Skog was a two year all state catcher, led our team to second in the state in 2003, specifically with uh, this Grand Slam home run in the semis against uh, St. Charles East. Then three, played three years for Texas Christian, All-American there, um, drafted by the White Sox, and would have played minor league baseball this year had they had a season. 
Riley Lees was a two-year All-State quarterback, led our team to the semis uh, one year, and then second in the state the, uh, the, the next year. And yes, that snow for our semifinal win over Bradley Bourbonnet, we had to play in a snowstorm. Um, he was drafted, or not drafted, recruited by Northwestern, and this year set up to be their number one go-to receiver, and he's been a, a very successful punt returner for several years for them. The boys won their first title after two second place finishes in the fall of 2005. Um, many good players. The second to the, uh, picture from the left is our All-State player that year, uh, Kevin Riley. Uh, but Ryan Wittenbrink, a sophomore that year, scored three of our four goals in, win in, in the two state championship games. And then he uh, earned All-State two years and is now playing for Indiana University. Laura Zhang did not uh, compete any sports for Learyville High School because she was a very successful rhythmic gymnast. Um, well, at probably about age nine is when she first realized how successful she could be. By 2016, she was an uh, Olympian. She was set to be our 2020 Olympian, which means she's gonna be on our Olympic team in 2021. And um, in the lower right-hand picture, she was crowned our homecoming queen in 2018. We've had some famous fans, some of our um, administration, Henry Underbrink on the left, long after his retirement, he's always always attending the games uh, right up to when he passed away in 1978. We already talked about Walter Johnson, Don Gossett, the upper right-hand corner, Walter Hornberger, who wore the orange blazer everywhere, Les LaFollette shooting uh, from Sports 11, shooting shirts into the um, stands during football games. And then most people who attend basketball games know Gary Graham, 1978 grad, a manager for the basketball team. And this picture on the lower right uh, is only from a couple of years ago. Um, he's still a great fan. Um, this is the back cover of the book, uh, black and white on the front and uh, color on the back as we move through the years. And then if, it, if something, like I said, if uh, there was enough interest that you had in the presentation, you want to read more about it, Sports 11 at 838 South Milwaukee Avenue is selling them. And I don't know if you, when we post this online, perhaps you can see this link for the out of town people. You could order one, uh, order any of those through those uh, through that link. So that's my last slide. And I guess I'm kind of waiting on Sonia to hear if there are any questions for us. Um, I wanted to thank you so much for that, Dale. Um, you. We appreciate it. And we'll, um, we'll certainly provide the link to, to anyone who asks for it. And maybe I can um, try to put it in the chat as well if I stop screen sharing in a bit. Uh, but I'll leave it up for, for the moment. Um, but yeah, let's see if, um, if anyone does have any questions. Um, yes, please do um, uh, put them in the, the chat if you can. If not, um, uh, if you're not able to do that, um, you can unmute yourself and we can, um, we can see that. But I think I see a couple. Let's see. Um, let's see, do um, one that I see is, do you have plans for keeping the book current? Uh, I think you're going to have to wait till, till uh, 21, <laughs> 17. No, not, I, I, I really don't. Maybe at the 20th year, 25 year mark after the, you know, 125th year, perhaps, but I really don't see that. Understood. Dale, I do have a question here from Diane. She wants to know how many years it took you to research and then write this wonderful historical book. Oh, thank you very much. Um, well, I had, from the time I decided to write a book until it came to print was 16 months, but I had actually done a lot before that because I had, um, put together that centennial videotape, the centennial celebration videotape, and went through every yearbook, every drops of ink leading up to that. And then after that was done throughout the centennial year, fall 2017 and 2018, uh, the Daily Herald had us writing article, had staff members writing articles on Libertyville High School history. And at first I was just planning on writing uh, two a month on athletics, but by November they stopped uh, other uh, articles stopped coming in. So I decided to start writing two a week. So a lot of 48 of the 100 um, feature stories were the Daily Herald articles. 
And so I thought it was actually going to be pretty easy. But like I said, I went through the independent register microfilm on Ralph Giss's columns and came up with, with a lot more stuff. So I guess you could say it would have been um, 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 two and a half years, I think you would say. Great. Let's see. Um, I see one other question. Um, uh, how much of the book was new information for you to learn? Well, I didn't know a whole lot about the, the 20s, 30s, and 40s. So most of that was very new. Not completely. I mean, I always did kind of gravitate to um, every time I'd have to proctor a test in the library, I'd pull out a old yearbook and kind of like looking through that. So I had an interest in it, but never really took the time. From the time I was a little kid growing up a block from Libertyville High School, and uh, I started paying attention to Libertyville sports from the mid 60s on, and always read the Independent Register. So from the mid 60s on, I had a pretty good understanding of Libertyville High School athletics, not much before that. All right. Here's another question, Dale, from Mary Eggert. Based on your exposure to new grads and alumni long departed, does your fondness for LHS increase? I would say yes. I mean, I kind of enjoy the fact that um, I know some, I've looked up some things up that a lot of people didn't know. And um, a lot of times now they'll ask me questions about the school knows if they need a historical question answered that they will come to me right away. And I, I take a lot of pride in that. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I have one question actually, uh, personally, and that's in, in your view, and maybe there's a couple different answers to this. What would you say is sort of the golden era of Libertyville athletics? Tough question. Um, I would, okay, if I had to say, if I had to give an answer, I would say uh, late 20s, early 30s, because that's when, if we didn't win a conference, and we usually did, in all three sports that we had, we were second. Um, it gets tricky because then you get into the 90s, where we're having great success on a state level every year, but then again, we got like 25 sports, both male and female. So I just would say in the late 20s, early 30s, Libertyville just rarely lost. All right. Let's see, any others from anyone before we um, wrap up in a few minutes? I will um, try to put this link in the chat here. All right. Yes. This is Ron Fenning. I had a question on the um, Newsom Award for the ladies. Um, I saw with Title IX, that's when the ladies first started playing competitively. Is that right, Dale? Yes, yes. And um, in a Newsom Award, there were many ladies that got the Newsom Award. What were the criteria for those uh, those ladies to get that prior to meeting, you know, with competition if they didn't play? I can remember my sister in 59, it was just volleyball for the girls uh, internally, but nothing competitively. Right. You know, um, what it seemed to be is that the Newsom Award would, like I, I could tell who the uh, Girls Athletic Association, otherwise known as GAA, I could see from the yearbooks who the president was, and I could see who the Newsom Award winner, and quite a, more often than not, those were the same people. So obviously their success in the, in the GAA, and maybe a lot of it just had to do with their leadership, not uh, their athletic ability, but I got to believe that that had something to do with it as well. And Dorothy Weir, the uh, 1948 Olympian, uh, she was a Newsom Award winner. She was also the GAA president. So are they picking the GAA president on athletic ability? That could be too. So nothing was ever really said. Okay. Let's see, anyone else either in the chat or um, unmute yourself and, and ask, happy to hear from you or any, um, any thoughts, uh, final thoughts as well. Dale, how many uh, wrestling tournament titles or wrestling titles has Libertyville High School won? In the conference, we have 22 of them. In the regionals, I believe we have like 26, 27. And then sectionals, we have seven. One, one state trophy got a fourth in 2008. And how many years have you been coaching in this uh, in, during yeah. that period of time? Um, I think I was only not coaching for two conference titles and one regional title. I, I've coached 43 years, 
on the staff, 34 as a head coach. So all but three. Congratulations. Thanks. I hope they keep me around. I like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been very good as far as a coach. Uh, my son played soccer for you and uh, you were really an understanding and very good uh, guy to young people. So thanks a lot. That. You bet. I'm, I'm glad he would think that in soccer because I never played soccer, <laughs> but they needed a coach. So I was willing to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Any, any last thoughts from anyone? Um, Okay, well, this um, this program was recorded, so we'll have a recording available, I think, via the Cook uh, Library YouTube.